spinning dog hair is very much like spinning cotton because dog down is very, very short. You can see this fiber is very short. The dog hair, not from my terrier, needs to be brushed out of the dog, the undercoat, not what you clip off. If you use what you clip off, it's going to be like rope. It may feel soft on the dog, but when you spin it, it's not soft. This, uh, now I look really good in black. This is down that was brushed out of a beautiful Samoyed that lives in Tucson named Star. She does obedience, agility, and rally. Oh, what is that, Wallace? Anyway, very interested to the other, the other dogs to see this. I'm going to, to make poonies. I like to spin dog hair from poonies or drum card it. I have a lot more help than I need. Leave it. My dogs know there's another dog in the house and they want to know what's going on. And again, I'm just going to use the Samoyed, but if you want, you could card something in. You can dye the Samoyed. It, it's one of the, the very best dog hair for spinning, although any dog hair can be spun. It doesn't have to be a purebred dog or any kind of a special dog at all. Now I'm going to roll this into my poonie. I'll make a couple poonies before I start. Again, spinning dog hair is very much like spinning cotton. You can do it on a support spindle, a, a takli or a, a charka, or you can do it on a lightweight hand spindle. Now there's a poonie. Let's use the royal hair spindle to do dog hair. Wind on my old yarn and spiral up. Give it a good whirl. Now I'm going to draft just like I was doing before and let the twist come in. This is a dog hair poonie that I did. Dog hair is a lot like cotton. It's very, very short. This is down that has been brushed out and you can see it's not very long. You can leave about four or five inches coming off the tip of the spindle and inchworm your way out. I like to spin dog hair with the least amount of twist I can and still get it to hold together and you can see it's going to be alright because then when you knit with it and finish it now I didn't wind that on very well that cop needs to be a lot neater than that when you knit with it or crochet with it it's going to bloom like angora rabbit now this is kind of lumpy and bumpy and I like lumpy bumpy dog hair but you can card this so that it's very very smooth and you can spin a very smooth yarn you can spin anything you want you can spin it a little thicker or you can spin it even thinner thicker yarn will take less twist to hold together again make sure you're spinning off the tip of the spindle only adding the minimum amount of twist and wind it on. You want to be sure you're coming off the tip of the spindle and not wrapping it around and glumping it up down there. That's spinning dog hair. Another thing you can do, especially if you you want a textured yarn, is just to spin a handful of picked fluff. I like to do this a lot too. The dog hair has to be very open. It can't be clumped together. So you are going to need to finger pick it. Spinning dog hair 
on the royal hair. Let's try spinning a very fine, even yarn. This is another puny, but I carded it so that it was carded much better. And you can see I can spin from lumpy to even. It's fiber preparation and how you draft out. I'm just inchworming a little bit at a time because this fiber is so short. Now when I have this kind of a little blob here, I can work it out, add the twist. There's a lot you can do and this is so easy because you use both hands and you're totally free to concentrate on the yarn that you're spinning. Unlike cotton, this doesn't draft back as easily. Now because this was a pretty well prepared puny, I can, but with wool you can't do this. And there again, I'm only inserting the minimum amount of twist. And you can see how fuzzy this yarn is going to be already. Here again, see if we can get it drafting back. And it got a little snag there where it wasn't perfectly carded. Have fun spinning dog hair. What happens when you reach the end? Your cop is full. This one isn't, but we're going to pretend that it is. And you need to take it off. You can simply wind a ball, pulling straight up. If you're using a Tockley, because it won't stand by itself, you need to set it in a tall glass. That will hold it up while you wind the, the yarn off. You can wind the yarn into a ball. Like this blue, you can wind the yarn onto a, this is a cardboard tube from toilet paper or paper towel, or you can wind it around a ball. Um, tennis ball will work. I have a little felted ball that I use. The ball is especially good for very, very fine fibers like the cotton. This is so fine that if you put it in a ball, it's going to tangle and it will be a real mess. So wind it around the ball. Now suppose instead of just this little bit of yarn, you wanted lots and lots of yards so that you could ply or make socks or crochet something else. You do what I call spinning on. You're going to join the yarn from the spindle to the yarn that you've already stored. Open up the end of the yarn a little bit so that it's not real tightly spun. You can just kind of fuzz it up. Unspin it a little bit by twisting backwards and opening it. That'll give the new fiber something to grab onto. Then overlap. You're going to need a little bit of new fuzz to give it something to grip. Again, just spin it exactly the same way. And you're going to spin. I need to wind this on a little bit more. You're going to spin your old end right on to your new cop of yarn. That's all there is to it. Now you will wind this cop on to this ball. Again, come straight up as you're winding and it will pull right off.